Now I've done videos in the past focusing on tips specifically for your video editing interview. But today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I really want to talk a little bit more about what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing during your video editing interview. Now, of course, these tips could apply to jobs that are all the way from in-house, in-person video editing jobs, full-time jobs, all the way to freelance jobs you may find that are in the video editing field that you may find on Upwork or Fiverr or things like that. And a lot of these tips are of course going to also apply to other people in other fields that are also doing an interview. But we are video editors, we are special, and we get our own special video, don't we? You're my special friend. Let's dive in. First, let's start with the do's. Do showcase your portfolio. Obviously, we know that your portfolio, your demo reel, your highlight reel, your video, of videos is one of the most important things that you can show to the client. It is literally, here's my experience in visual form. And here's my proof, if you will, that I edit. Have I personally gone into interviews empty handed without a portfolio? Yes, I have. I hate editing demo reels, I'll be honest. But I do acknowledge how important they are. You wanna make sure that your demo reel, your highlight reel, your portfolio is edited and complete before you go into the interview, possibly even sent to the interviewer before you even get there to the interview or do the interview if it's virtual. They may want to watch your work before they interview you so they have something to talk to you about. They may watch it with you while you are there in the interview, which can be awkward, but can be important so you can have a visual reference to the kind of work that you do, why you edit the way that you do, how your demo reel directly applies to that client or that company and what you are editing for them for. All in all, very important. Make sure you have that done before your interview. Do discuss your software proficiency. Now, this is definitely one of the more important things as well in terms of your skill set as a video editor is having knowledge of the software, preferably that the client wants you to use. Some clients and companies couldn't care less what you edit on, depending on the kind of work. But if you are in house, you may be working on their computers and thus with their software. Or if you're working with a YouTuber or a creator of sorts, they may already have an editing workflow already created in which they then need you to come onto their team and edit in their workflow that would be also in their software of choice. Now you don't need to dive too far into this. You don't need to pull up the software and show them that you know where all the buttons are, but it is important that you feel comfortable talking about the software and any questions that they may have about your knowledge about the software. Do discuss your creative process. It is important for the interviewer to feel confident and comfortable in your hands as an editor. And part of that for me includes being able to discuss the creative process, how you go from the very beginning stages of the edit to the very end stages of the edit. What collaboration is needed at different times? What means of inspiration do you use to decide what you're going to create or how you're going to create something? What do you need from the client in order to make each project? And of course, discussing general time frames or time expectations so that you and the client company interviewer are on the same page. Now you don't have to know all these things right up front. You may not even know exactly what the interviewer is hiring you for. And that would be up to you to ask the right questions during this process so that you can get the right idea of the kind of work that they are asking you to do and how that reflects on you and your own creative process and your own workflow that you've established for yourself and how you can combine that so that you guys can work together nicely. Highlight problem solving skills. This tip is twofold. One, because problem solving is a natural thing that video editors do. We are constantly problem solving to get the footage we receive to look like the outcome that everyone is expecting it to look like. And that can be very difficult, making video editors great problem solvers. So it's great to highlight that. Number two, when in doubt, you can accentuate on that. Particularly if a question arises or a problem or skill that you don't have arises or something that you are uncomfortable or unsure about, you can always divert back to, I don't know, but I'll find out. Or I love taking on challenges like finding out out more about this, or I love taking on projects that challenge me as a video editor, such as this, or just leaning on, 
I'm a great problem solver and I'll figure it out. Maybe a little bit more eloquent than that, but you get it. Demonstrate attention to detail. Now, of course you want to highlight your attention to detail in the interview simply because it's a great skill to have. And as a video editor, it's really, really important. And so you wanna make sure that that comes across, whether that be in your resume or your demo reel, or just how you speak and ask questions during the interview. During the process of the interview, if you are bringing up questions and the interview is saying things like, wow, that's a great question. And you guys seem very aligned on the things that they are telling you or asking you and the things that you are telling them or asking them, the interviewer is going to acknowledge that you know what you're talking about, you understand what he or she is talking about, and you are paying attention to what is going on in the interview. You also wanna make sure you read over the job description ahead of time before you get to the interview and be sure to come with questions about the job description. If things aren't too clear to you, if you do want more clarification on on certain things. I think the interviewer would respect you for that, for coming to the job interview prepared with your questions about the video editing job, what exactly it entails. It's ultimately going to make you look really good if you come with questions and knowledge like that. Consider alternate paths. Now, this isn't really as much an interview tip as it is just an overall video editing industry tip. I do fully acknowledge that the video editing world is incredibly competitive. It is rough out there, guys. People are not getting hired. People with experience are not getting hired. In general, it's a mess. And I do feel like that bitterness for the overall field could possibly come across in interviews. And we really don't want that to happen. We really want to avoid any jadedness towards the industry. Because if you're in an interview, that's not going to be a great vibe between you and the interviewer, and you're probably not gonna get the job. But you can use your video editing skill set in order to get other jobs. You may already know this because you may have already started looking at other slightly different jobs that are similar to video editing, social media management, graphics, motion graphics, visual effects, production assistant work, post-production assistant, post coordinator, video producer. And if you end up getting an interview for any of these jobs, you can still use your video editing skill set for the interview. Even if you can't fully rely on your knowledge for that particular job, video editing is so vast and the knowledge that it takes to become a video editor, to grow in the video editing space, it can be used to hop into other different fields. And I think a lot of interviewers acknowledge that. So don't be afraid of only having video editing experience if you are choosing to get a slightly different job. Use internships to validate your work ethic. Again, another twofold tip. One, because I just need to say it again for the people in the back, get an internship if you haven't already had one or if you're not too old and experienced to get one. Internships and me directly working with other professionals in a similar field as me is what helped me communicate to other professionals like myself in how to interview for jobs. It also, to me at least, counts as real work experience. Even if you are just answering phones and taking out the trash. It's a reputable company that you have worked for and it shows that you took initiative to do something like that for yourself as a career move, if you will. So if you are worried about your lack of experience before you even get to the interview process, you may want to consider having an internship to back you up a little bit so that at least you can rely on that and possibly have a reference that that interviewer can call, maybe a testimonial even, and maybe even more that you can show on your portfolio because of that internship. So it's worth it. Do follow up after the interview. You wanna make sure that after the interview is done, you recall in your brain any questions or fun facts that may have come up during the interview, any shared interests between you and the interviewer, any questions that maybe you said, hey, I'll get back to you on that, or, oh, or a movie that was brought up when you guys were just chatting and you said, I've never heard of that movie, and then you go and look it up later. Any information that happened during that interview that could be interesting to bring up or important to relay back to the interviewer, you're going to want to email them a follow-up message either the next day or possibly a few days later. I wouldn't 
wait more than a week to email them back. I think by that point, they may have interviewed other people and possibly forgotten about you and you may have lost that connection there. But that's the whole point of this tip is if there was a connection between you and the interviewer, if you guys were kind of vibing, and if you think that maybe there was a pretty good chance that you may get the job, but maybe you just needed to follow up on something, definitely no more than a few days after the original interview. That's gonna keep that connection alive and it's gonna let the interviewer know that you respect them and their time and you are passionate about getting the job. Prepare your social media before the interview and preferably even well before you even start applying to jobs, definitely take a little peruse through your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, and really just Googling yourself just to double check and see what's coming up, what pictures are coming up, what connections or old posts are coming up just by Googling yourself because you know that that company is going to be Googling you if they have any genuine interest in you. They may look at your LinkedIn page, they may Google you, they may check you out on Instagram, even just for the sake of putting a face to your name. So you just want to do a quick peruse just to make sure that everything looks kosher and appropriate. Do ask questions. It's really important that you come to the interview with questions. I think it shows the interviewer that you are actually interested in the job, you are actually interested in them as a company, and you find this interview important to you. So you want to ask the right questions that are going to clarify everything to make this job very clear to you, whether you want it or not. So you can ask about their process, what their workflow is like from beginning to end of project. Who will you be working with? Who will you be answering to? What time is lunch? I had to reach up to get to the cherry on the top. Asking questions makes you seem knowledgeable of the job, of the company, and overall makes you look better. As long as it's not too many questions and they're not dumb questions and they're not questions that you could have answered yourself by just looking at their website. If it's not any of that, then it's good solid questions and you should ask them. <sighs> That was a lot of do's. But just as important as the do's, if not more important, are the don'ts. So let's get into those. Don't get too technical. Yes, discussing your software proficiency is important. However, discussing too much of it and getting too technical with it can be kind of a red flag. One, the interviewer may not know anything about the software. They may not know anything about video editing, except for a few key terms that either the boss gave them to interview you about to understand or just from their own experience with video editing, but it may not be a lot. So if you overload them with too much technical talk, it may come across the wrong way and they may just be confused by what you're saying. If they're not confused by what you're saying, then they may be straight up annoyed by what you're saying. I know I have run into many other video editors or people of the like who love getting very technical and talking about the technical. Well, I personally hate the technical. And so if you talk to me too much about the technical, I'm gonna blow a gasket. Maybe not so much anymore. But at the time back then, whenever I was in film school, I would get annoyed a lot. And so you do have to think about what the interviewer is going through. They may be interviewing a lot of different people in terms of this video editing job, and they may be dealing with a lot of overly technical, annoying people. So don't be that. Be sure to gauge with them how much they actually want to talk about Premiere Pro or other very intricate video editing terms and use general layman's terms whenever you can, just so you don't come across too snobby. Don't disregard your soft skills. Personally, I think just as important as your ability to video edit and your ability to understand the software is your ability to communicate, your ability to be reliable, your ability to be consistent and honest and transparent. A lot of that may even just come up from naturally talking to the interviewer, but don't think that they they only want to talk about your video editing skills. If you're gonna be hired by them, then they want to hire you like they would wanna hire any other employee. And they will want to know what are your other soft skills? What else can you offer to this company? Why else should we hire you? Because there's tons of people that know how to video edit, but does everyone know how to communicate via email the right way? No, they don't. So make sure to communicate that if you have the ability to and the time to. 
don't discuss pay. Now you definitely wanna prepare what your rate or salary expectations would be at said job, whether they list it online or if you are kind of making it up on your own or you're just gonna kind of wait and gauge what they offer to you, however you choose to go about it. Definitely prepare for that ahead of time and do your research ahead of time on what the market rate for that kind of job in that area would be. However, do not just bring it up in the interview unless the interviewer brings it up. There is a specific time to talk about money in any sequence of getting a job. And usually in my experience, that comes towards the end of the conversation. Yes, does that mean it might be a waste of time for you if you go through the whole interview and then you learn that the rate is way too low for you? Yes, that might be a waste of time, but not really because then you would learn, okay, look at this interview that I'm having right now with this person, the kind of person that they are, how they approached me, how I approached them, what the job entailed, and now look at what they're offering me. So maybe you can use that as a lesson learned moving forward to not interview for those types of jobs again, unless you get the numbers before you interview. But if you bring up pay too early in their interview, it just kind of comes across a little bit brash to the interview viewer because there's so much else to talk about rather than just the money. And so if the money is all you care about, then maybe the interviewer starts to think, mm, do they actually care about this job or do they just care about getting paid? And yes, we all care about just getting paid, but should at least try to care about the job as well. Don't be afraid to fake it till you make it. I had originally written on here, don't lie about your skill set, And then I had to talk to myself and say, Colleen, you've done that and it worked for you. So this is a gray area. I don't think that you should interview for a job that you are wildly unqualified for, obviously. However, if something comes up in the interview that you have never done before, should you say that you have done that thing before? No, you shouldn't in the case that they ask you to back it up. But can you say things like, I haven't directly edited that, but I'm very aware and comfortable of what it is? Yeah, if you are comfortable or you can get comfortable very quickly, I think it's okay to tweak things a little bit more if you can come across with a lot of reassurance to the client. Not overconfidence, because that may come across the wrong way, but reassurance to the client that I understand what you're looking for. Have I done it all before? No. Can I figure it out easily? Yes. Am I an expert problem solver? Yes. Am I an expert figure it outer? Yes. Any way that you can convey that to the client so that they feel very assured, the better your interview is going to go. Don't hide your personality. Similar to don't disregard your soft skills, don't hide your humor or your interest in passions outside of work to the interviewer if it's appropriate. I think it's really important that you convey to the interviewer that you are an interesting person to be around <laughs> because sometimes that's just important as the skills that you bring to the table. Companies may be looking for very enticing, positive personalities to add to their team. And they may even value that over skill set, especially if it's a very collaborative team culture kind of company. So whether you have the skill set to back you up or not, showcasing your friendliness and your enthusiasm and your humor possibly to the interviewer is going to help them get a better vibe of you and may help them decide on hiring you, possibly even over the skills that you bring. Don't arrive unprepared. Again, I mentioned this in past tips, but do your homework on the kind of company that you're interviewing for. Look on their website, read through their whole website, look at their about page, look at the people on the team, Team. Look at the language that they're using. Look at their social medias. Look at the product and services that they're offering. They may ask you that when you come to the interview. Are you aware of what we are selling? This has happened before. And if you come to the interview and you don't understand what the company is trying to sell or trying to do, it's gonna come across like this is your fifth interview of the day, whether it is or isn't. This is your fifth interview of the day and you're just trying to get through the day and have somebody give you a job. You really don't care what job it is. Whether that's true or not, don't let the interviewer think that about you and do your homework. 
Don't forget that you're interviewing them too. This interview is not only for the opportunity for the interviewer to decide if you are worthy of their company, but it's also a time for you to decide if the interviewer is representing the company in the right way, or if the job is aligning to what you ultimately want to do. If you are coming into this interview with the care of, I really don't care, somebody please give me a job, I really don't care what it is. Well, I don't think that that's gonna go very well for you, but I mean, then forget this whole tip. But really, if you want a sustainable long-term career with any company or client or creator or whoever, you want to make sure that that relationship aligns with you. And you want to be very honest if it's not aligning. So you need to go into the interview with just as many questions and intrigue as the interviewer has in terms of, is this relationship going to work? Does this partnership work? Can we work together? And does this align with my career goals? Overall, I want you to be positive. I want you to be professional. I want you to be authentic and genuine and kind. And I want you to be confident going into your video editing interview. Let me know if these tips helped you at all, if these tips are old news, or if there's any tips that you think I was missing in terms of getting to your video editing interview and how to kill it and get the job. I know. It's rough out there. Hopefully these tips help a little bit. If this video was helpful to you, I'd so appreciate if you can hit the like button below and hit subscribe for more tips on video editing, freelance lifestyle, and really all things getting a job related in terms of this creative field that we're in. So I do appreciate you so much for subscribing. Thank you to my team. Again, I am Colleen and I'll catch you guys in whatever video you see me in next. Have a good one.